Uh, hi, everyone. I guess we can start. Uh, maybe it's too loud. We can do it more silent. Yeah. Uh, everyone hears me? Yeah, so that's great. Thank you for coming. I hope you don't want to sleep because it's not too early. But uh, uh, I hope if you want to sleep, you'll, uh, uh, you'll get rid of this <laughs> during my talk. So today we'll talk about how to rediscover gRPC with Kotlin coroutines. And before we start, I want to ask you if you're already familiar with uh, Kotlin or gRPC. So please raise your hands if you know what gRPC is. Okay, pretty much, and uh, Kotlin. Oh, too many people. I, I like you. I like Krak, Kivan, Gikon. Because uh, all the time I'm talking at other conferences, there are few people who like Kotlin, and I'm upset because I like Kotlin much. Uh, so organizers asked me to remind you that you have to ask me some questions. So you should use this link and uh, ask questions and vote for them. And uh, a few words about me, because who I am and who I am to talk to you today. Uh, so I am a software engineer at Wix, probably as most of you here. Uh, I am also organizer of uh, Kyiv Kotlin user group and uh, a conference called Kotlin Night Kyiv. I am involved in some conferences, uh, speak at meetups and conferences and so on. You can follow me if you want. Uh, so I'm here not only to talk to you, but also to promote my conference. And you are all invited. If you want to join us uh, on the 1st of June and midsummer in Kyiv with Scotland Night, you can use this promo code and have some discount. So see you in Kyiv. And one more very important thing you should know about me. I like boxing. So I really do it for a year. So think twice before asking tricky questions. <laughs> it could be dangerous. Uh, so it was a joke, of course. I won't hit anyone, at least today. Uh, so today we'll talk about what gRPC is, because not everyone knows. Uh, then we'll implement some simple, very simple service and uh, um, in Java style. And then we'll rediscover how to make it uh, better with Kotlin. And then I show some cool feature called flow control in gRPC with Kotlin. And uh, uh, we'll discover some uh, specific Kotlin libs, and maybe you like them and use them in your uh, projects. Uh, so in the very beginning, it was a monolith, because um, if you started your career seven years ago or even uh, earlier, you, you probably wrote monolith applications. But today, microservices is a trend. Almost everyone is doing my microservices. So uh, raise your hands again if you are doing microservices. Don't be shy. Uh, it's not a scene. Uh, so yes, uh, we are um, doing microservices, or at least we want to do it. Why microservices are so cool? Uh, because we can do some independent development. We can. Uh, uh, you can like divide your some big project into small pieces and develop them independently. And uh, of course, small pieces are e easily to scale. That's like was the main purpose of creating microservices architecture. And you can choose the most suitable tool because if you divide something in small pieces, you can uh, one piece could be developed in Java, another in Scala, another in Go, another in Node, and uh, it works. Sounds like magic. And of course, you can do this development in parallel. One team works on one microservice, another team works on another microservice, and you just define the contract and happy with it. And uh, so on. Microservices had, uh, has a lot of uh, pros. But we cannot talk only about pros. There is always a con, um, a big con. So in microservices, there is one. The biggest issue in changing a monolith into microservices lies in changing the communication pattern. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, when we worked with Monolith, we just called some functions, some services, and we are on the one server, just our code base, and we worked like with uh, simple functions, and it was OK. But when we are switching to microservices, you should understand that your function could be on another server, and uh, you have to deal with network. And network is something that is not reliable, and uh, you should handle all this stuff. So uh, this communication, um, now could be a problem for you. By the way, do you, do you know who said this? 
okay, maybe you're still asleep. Uh, so it was Martin Fowler, really smart guy. So if you don't know him, just Google him, read his articles, books, and uh, you'll be smart too. Uh, so today, as I understand, uh, a lot of people write in microservices. Uh, what tool are you using for writing it? Um, as I understand, most of you are using HTTP 1 and REST, so raise your hands if it's true. So yeah, HTTP 1 and REST is some common pattern for everyone, and for Wix also it's common. And we, it works for us, and we are happy with it, so why should we need, do we need anything else? Uh, so at Wix, we have uh, a lot of clients. Um, the most recent data is that we have uh, 150 million of users. And it's a lot of requests per day, per uh, second, per minute, and we need to handle it somehow. In order to handle it, we need to have more and more servers and need to make more to Google Cloud, more to Amazon or Azure or any other provider, and uh, it costs money. So to be honest, I don't want my company to spend more time on Google Cloud or Amazon, I want them to spend it on my salary. And uh, that's why uh, we need some solution to, like, to have less servers, to pay less to Google Cloud, to Amazon, to make your communications more efficient. How can we do this? There are a lot of different ways how can we do this. And in my talk, uh, we will uh, show only, only one way, it's gRPC. So finally, it's gRPC. Let's discover what it is. Uh, do you know what gRPC stands for? It's uh, um, acronym. So, uh, for a long time, Google said us that gRPC means gRPC Remote Procedure Call. It's a recursive acronym. Uh, but they understood that this uh, solution sucks, so it's not true anymore. And they decided to change the first letter each new version. So for first version it was gRPC, then it was good, green, gentle, and for um, 21st version is uh, Gandalf. So um, maybe at some day they'll run out of words starting with G and start to create the, theirs. Uh, but that's G. What the hell is RPC? Um, if you started your career maybe uh, 10 years ago or something like this, you probably heard about CORBA, RMI, something like this. So RPC is, uh, according to Wikipedia, it's remote procedure call. Uh, you probably don't need to read it if you don't want. Uh, so RPC means that you just handle some function, like it's your own func function, but uh, it might be on another server and uh, um, um, but you work with it that it's, it is your own function. So probably like this, in sim simple words. Uh, but gRPC, it's not CORBA, it's not RMI, it's a simple, elegant way to do this stuff. Uh, so uh, we finally understood what gRPC is. Let's discover its features, why it's so cool and why it can help us to be more efficient. Uh, first of all, gRPC is built on top of HTTP2. Uh, HTTP 2, I won't tell you a lot about it, but a brief overview of its history. In 91 it was 0 0.9, in 96 1.0, then 1.91, and then no progress, no progress, no progress, maybe they're not alive, guess no, and suddenly, in 2015, HTTP 2 appeared and told everyone that he's alive. Of course it's a joke, uh, all this time they had uh, um, something to do, they worked on this protocol and they uh, changed it much and they made it more efficient. But what I wanted to show you that the whole internet changed, that the whole world changed. Uh, even I graduated from school, from university, and only after that HTTP2 appeared. So they had a lot of to think about. Uh, so why HTTP2 is so cool? Uh, first of all, finally we have single TCP connection per client. Uh, as you remember, for this, uh, in HTTP 1, you opened single connection per request, and you also could have keep alive, but there were some problems with it. So, um, uh, in by default, it was one connection per request. Uh, in HTTP 2, we have one connection per client, so you can reuse it. And as this connection is always opened, you can use it in bidirectional streaming. What does it mean? That your client can use this port and send data to server, and your server can send data to your client. And uh, you don't need WebSockets anymore, because uh, it's just supported by your protocol. 
And one more cool feature is flow control. What is it? Sometimes your uh, client cannot handle all the requests that server is sending to you because it could be mobile phones or some tablets. Uh, they're not really uh, capable. And um, uh, you need to, s to tell your server that you can't handle all this stuff. You need to uh, reduce the number of calls you can handle in order not to be down. So uh, flow control can help you. You just uh, send only batches of requests and only when your client handles it, you receive another batch of requests. Uh, so just like a uh, cool feature in order um, not to make your clients mad and not to make your clients down. So that's enough about HTTP2. I won't talk a lot about it because it's uh, not what about our topic is. Uh, but uh, gRPC. gRPC supports a lot of languages. For example, at Wix, we're using Java, Scala, Node.js, even Python, and uh, Kotlin. So, and uh, we're using gRPC, and we're happy with it. Uh, so in gRPC, you just define your um, interfaces, and then it's compiled to the language you're using. It could be compiled to multiple languages, and that's how it works. And uh, one more cool feature, which really makes gRPC um, efficient, is binary. That um, this uh, like library is binary, and HTTP2 is finally binary protocol. Uh, as you remember, or even don't remember, HTTP1 was text protocol, and sending text is more expensive than sending bytes. Uh, and finally, HTTP2 is binary. You send only bytes, and uh, gRPC supports it. And sending bytes is cheap. And uh, with having this single connection, with having binary messages, your communication could be uh, less expensive. Uh, so, most of you are Java developers, as I understand. And uh, um, Java works with gRPC. Java likes gRPC. There is a library called gRPC Java, and you can compile your interfaces from protobuf to Java code and work with it in Java and be happy. Uh, but, not but, but it works. we like gRPC too. We like this technology, we like this solution, it works for us, but there is a small problem. We like Java, but not as much as Scala. And we have Scala. Scala is not supported by default with gRPC. Uh, we can use like gRPC Java, but if someone had heard, have heard about Scala Java interop, it's something that I don't want to work with. There is a cool library called Scala PB, which helps us to deal with all this interop and boilerplate and uh, work with gRPC as its uh, native Scala. But Wix hired me and I have a lot of friends. And we started to think, what if we try to introduce Kotlin into our company? We have Scala code base, we have Node code base, and we want also to have a Kotlin code base. And we started to think, is it possible to work with gRPC, Kotlin, Scala, Node together, and uh, how to do this? And uh, that's how this talk appeared. So we discovered gRPC. Now you can see these features. We talked a little about it. And then let's move to another topic. I told you uh, that uh, gRPC is binary, but how this binary is supported, how it works. Uh, first of all, gRPC uses protocol buffers. Do you know what it is? OK, it's a common answer, so I'll explain you, of course. Uh, according to Google, it's a uh, language natural platform natural mechanism for serializing structured data. So it's like XML or JSON, but smaller, faster, and simpler. So think of it like uh, this way. Uh, so how it works. You define proto file. So it's not XML, it's just pseudo language, you can see. Uh, you define your service, for example, greeter. You define your RPC call. And then you explain what your messages are. So our RPC call it sends, uh, receives hello request and returns hello reply. And here is explanation what hello request and hello reply is. And you wrote this simple proto file. And after that, it's compiling using plugins. And it's compiled to classes of language you, cho you have chosen. 
For example, it could be compiled to Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Go, so whatever you want. And um, languages that are listed here are only supported officially. But we also have languages that are not supported officially, but supported by some community, some library, and you also have some interop. And for example, if you have gRPC Java, uh, you can use it with Scala, with Groovy, with Kotlin. It won't be uh, like native, but it works. So it supports a lot of languages. And let's summarize why uh, protobuf is so cool. As we understand, when we define this uh, like file, you show what this service is, you, show, like, you define your calls, your messages, and if your language is type safe, your like, uh, protobuf is also type safe. Why is it so? Because your message is compiled to uh, the appropriate class in Java, for example, or in Go, and uh, then you have this type safety, and you cannot have any mistakes because you have compile time error. Uh, then you cannot violate schema, schema because of the same uh, thing, uh, because your uh, like uh, services are also compiled to interfaces of your language, and your uh, methods are also compiled to methods of your to methods of your language. And uh, uh, of course, this protopath under the hood, those binary serialization and deserialization, it is fast. And um, one of the coolest feature of protobuf is backward compatibility. All uh, fields of your messages are optional. So you can easily deprecate some fields or, and you can easily add new fields. And uh, it's uh, one of the crucial things. The main disadvantage of protobuf is human readability. I mean, if you want to debug, and you're just uh, or you're just transferring your messages, and you want to some debug it. You'll see only bytes, and I don't know a lot of people who can read bytes, so I think it's not really useful for you. So if human readability is important for you, protobuf is not your solution. But if it's imp it's not important, you don't care. Uh, protobuf is really nice. So. I talk too much, as I understand. So let's implement some simple service. Um, so maybe you noticed that I have a lot of the star like cartoons. So um, I'm great. This uh, I'm great uh, fan of Star Wars. So I decided that we need to build a Death Star, this tiny little Death Star, to destroy our universe. Uh, so task for this session. First of all, we need to write a Death Star. Then we need to destroy as many planets as we can. Of course, tweet about it. And we will greet winners at the end of this session. So you can see that on my, maybe you don't see, but on my table we have a lot of presents from my comp from Wix. And uh, uh, those of you who were the most active will gain some prizes. And of course, enjoy. I was a little bit lazy, so I wrote this application beforehand because I don't want to write it <laughs> right now. And it's ready in production, and you can break it. But if you break it, uh, you won't win any prize, so be careful. Uh, do you need more time to scan it if you want? So don't be lazy, get up. It's uh, almost lunch time. So. Uh, if QR code doesn't work for some reason, you can also use this link below. Uh, so, I think I can proceed. Yep. Um, in this application, we have two main flows. First flow is user joins. When you, user, join our application, you go to our Death Star service. And uh, this star service goes to planet service in order to have like recent um, to have all the planets we have in our universe, and then returns it to our user, like to draw initial state. Um, then our user subscribes to log service because we want to receive all logs because we want to be in charge what what is happening with uh, the star, and we also want to have scores table. And that's why we are subscribing to scores. And um, in some time, you'll receive some updates from logs and, and uh, score services. And 
the most interesting part is destroying. When user wants to destroy a planet, again, he or she goes to um, the star service and says, I want to destroy this planet. If your um, click was successful, because not every click is successful, it was on demand, um, you're going, the star service is going to planet service and updates planet. It says that this planet is not available anymore and new planet should be generated. New planet is generated and returns to our the star and then we also log everything, we log every step and we update scores because if you remove some planet you gain some score. And uh, all services like logs and scores and the star notifies our client about updates asynchronously and you see these updates in your uh, device. So let's implement. First of all, we start from protofile. Um, we'll implement only the part of this, uh, of this application. So this is the star service and we have only one call, RPC called destroy. Uh, this destroy method receives destroy planet request and returns planets. You can see that I uh, also put stream keyword here and here. What does it mean? I had told you that with gRPC you can use uh, bi-directional streaming. Your client can um, send not one request destroy planet, but we can send a bunch of requests, a lot of requests destroy planet via one connection. And we also receive a lot of planet uh, responses. So that's why we can put uh, keyword stream and then we have bi-directional streaming here because we have stream here and here. You also can see that you have service uh, and you have some messages, but you don't know what messages are because uh, you can import another protofile in your protofile by doing this stuff. You import another protofile and here it is. Like message planet is just some DTO. Here planets it's a um, list of planets and the store planet request is just username, planet and Sorry. And some wait. Okay, I know what, it, yeah, and wait. Uh, then a kind of ma little of magic. And we have our auto generated classes. So each gRPC plugin took our protofile and generated some classes in Java because we are using gRPC Java. And then we need to code a little and uh, define our server. In our server, we are doing the star. Um, we are adding our implementation, build it, and that's actually a simple server. And the most interesting part is service. Sorry. Let's go to IDE because we need to write some code. Um, so now, do you see the code? Everything is okay? Uh, so let's implement it. First of all, you see that um, we are using gRPC Java. So we are writing in Kotlin by using gRPC Java. So what should we do in our destroy method? First of all, we need to notify our client with all planets. So we are doing, uh, we are getting all planets and send it to our client. Um, it doesn't look very cool, but I'll explain you everything. So um, we need to like um, send stream observer and to send the callback because that's how gRPC Java works. It works with callbacks. Uh, so next, when we like draw all the current state of our universe, we need to do what we need to do. We need to delete planet. But in order to delete planet, uh, we need to understand that we uh, should receive like stream of requests. So we need to handle stream. How to handle stream? Uh, we need to return stream observer. So, so we are returning stream observer, and in method on next, we are explaining what to do with each destroy planet request because it's streaming. So, when we uh, receive destroy planet request, what should we do? We should we should score that we. First of all, we should remove it. We should remove planet. If uh, planet removal was successful, we need to update scores. So, 
So we update score. We said that this user destroyed this planet and his score is updated. And after that, we need to log it. After we log it, uh, what do we do? We need to generate a new planet. So again, callback. We see that we are dealing with a lot of callbacks here. And uh, when we generate a new planet, what should we do? We should log it that we generate a new planet. And after that, we should notify all users. So this is how uh, this is actually the code. So let's return to our slides. We implemented the star service. Well done. And here comes the most interesting part, rediscover. As you see, I showed you that we use gRPC Java. And that's how the story method looks, if we just uh, show you on slides. And what can we notice? We can notice this uh, figure. Do you like it? Raise your hands if you like it. Don't be shy. All the time there is one person who um, raised his hand. And actually, yeah, I don't like it too. And this situation is called callback hell. As you remember, when I started to do every new step, each new step, we need to add another callback and another callback and another callback. And uh, it's hell. We don't want to deal with it. So we need another solution. Why don't we use futures? We are like stupid guys, so we need to use futures. So we will return to our code. I have, yeah, I have another implementation. So actually, we do the same stuff. Future get all, we get all, and now you can see that um, here. Uh, I said that I need future stop. And here yes, I am working with future stop. Before this, I worked with stop, simple stop, which needs uh, stream observers. And now I sell, uh, say gRPC that I don't want to work with stream observers. I want to work with futures. And here in coroutines, uh, here comes coroutines. We are launching new coroutine. And here we get await. And we get all planets without any stream observer. So just like plain. Uh, straightforward code. So actually, I'm a little bit lazy, so and we don't have much time, so I'll do this hack. So what did it do? Uh, we get all planets, and we um, repaint it. And again, as far as we are working with bidirectional streaming, I want you to understand this situation. We still need to return stream observer. So it's the only place where we will need stream observer is uh, because of bidirectional streaming. But again, we can work with futures under the hood. So here we see that uh, we work with futures. And uh, we do not have stream observers here. So we just score, log, destroy, uh, and notify all planets. So this solution is a little bit better than previous one because previous one is ugly, but it's not like the best one. So let's return to our new destroy method. New destroy method looks this way. Do you like it? But it's pretty. Why don't you like it? So it's not bad. And actually, uh, the main uh, thing I want you to show that if we use gRPC Java, it's the only way to work. So uh, if you, you don't uh, have another solution to make it prettier, you can just refactor it, extend this, extend and uh, extract some methods, but you still have to work with this stuff. But here comes rediscovering part two. So if we worked with gRPC Java, it was uh, like the only way. But we are Kotlin developers. So what do we want? We want to use channels, because channels is the best solution for client-server communication. Why do we need any stream observers? Why do we need to break our beautiful minds 
if we just can use channels and send some stuff using channels and receive stuff from channels, and it works. So we need a new hero, and we have this hero. Um, this hero is called gRPC Kotlin. You can use another plugin called gRPC Kotlin, and your code is compiled not to Java, but to Kotlin. And you can benefit from coroutines and from all uh, Kotlin stuff. So let's code a little. Again, I wanted to code a little bit more, but uh, we don't have enough time, so I'll just do this stuff. But I'll explain everything. I think I have some typo here, so don't, be sh don't worry. So what do we need? We create channel here. So we are working with Scotland now. We are creating channel, and we add this channel to listener in order to subscribe, so it's uh, like previous flow. And we send previous, uh, like current state of our universe. So you see that we are using channel, we are using method send, and we are sending all planets from our planet stuff. And it looks straightforward. You're just thinking that planet service is just your service and your server, but unfortunately, or fortunately, it's another microservice, and it's your PC call. But we don't care, and you see that uh, you don't have stream observers here. You don't have any callbacks on next methods, and it's cool. And again, you don't need to return any stream observers here. You just can iterate over requests. So the main feature of your of gRPC Kotlin is that you can um, benefit from channels. You just iterate over requests like uh, like its list but it's channel, and this loop is asynchronous and it's lazy. So uh, you just receive new request, and you can handle it. If there are no requests, you do nothing. You're just delayed. So that's how it works. And all this stuff is, and all this stuff is straightforward. You see that you're, um, we are removing planet, we are updating score, we are logging everything, and um, and it looks more straightforward. So here, this method, you method here, so do you like it? Please, I tried. <laughs> I tried to make it better. <laughs> so uh, actually, I like it. Uh, but, um, and this like uh, way is a key. But the main problem of it is this lunch. Um, because if we write without this lunch, we'll have a problem because we need to do this in separate coroutine, and uh, we need to return our channel. It's because of how gRPC Kotlin is built. But wait, we can have another hero. Another hero is called Crotoplus. Crotoplus is another library that you can use instead of gRPC Kotlin, and it solves this problem in a little bit different way. So again, I was a little bit lazy, so I uh, hear code. You see that it's the same code, but the main um, difference is that you don't need to return like channel. You receive request and response channel in this method, and you don't need to return anything. Uh, so you don't need any lunch coroutine here. You just have your straightforward business logic. So. The same thing here is you only see the business logic here, and then you don't see any rubbish here. So now the story method looks this way. I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at it and to understand how pretty it is. So do you like this? Please, <laughs> I tried. Uh, so. This is how we can implement the stream method in Crota Plus. And you can see that this code is straightforward. You just have business logic here. You log, you generate new, you generate that you generated new, or you log that you generated new, you update all your listeners. So you don't have any uh, boilerplate, you don't have any um, stream observers, anything that you don't need. You just have only what you need here. And that's what I like about uh, coroutines and about Kotlin. So this solution is great. It's a good job, and our trader is happy. So 
Let's forget about our service, and I'll show a little bit about flow control. Uh, so, what is flow control? I already told you, but I remind: if your client is, cannot handle all the requests from server, you can uh, manage it with flow control. So you just tell your server that I want to handle only five requests. You handle these five requests, and then you gain another five requests, or you can handle one by one. Uh, so, if you don't use flow control, you have this situation. So, you, you understand that your client is a cup, coffee is your server, and uh, this situation. Um, so, it's not really good situation, so flow control ha can help you with it. How to implement it? If we are using gRPC Java, we need to do these steps. Disable automatic flow control in server, uh, set on ready handler, we need to request messages, we need to disable automatic flow control in client, set on ready handler, request messages, and it looks this way. And again, do you like this? I don't like it, it's awful, it's like... So, and just from the hell. So if you want to do this way in use gRPC Java, may the force be with you. And our poor Java developers, they really use it. They have no other solutions. They don't have Kotlin. They need to use it. So. And in Kotlin, we have a lot of different solutions. And if we use Crota Plus and channels, this is the code we need to enable it. So you don't need to write anything. If you want to enable your flow control, you actually don't have a chance not to enable because it's enabled by default. So you're just using chan channels and you're iterating over it and implementing your logic. So uh, under the hood, in this uh, like for cycle, flow control is, implement is already implemented one by one, by one. so you receive requests only on demand. That's enough with flow control. And last topic is more lips for Kotlin, more specific lips. When I started working with Kotlin and gRPC and started working on this talk, I think that Kotlin is cool, gRPC is cool, we are all asynchronous, we like it. So I have these beautiful robots that can save your life, can save the universe, and uh, I'll like, um, feel myself, myself like a boss. But in reality, I have these ones that can't even shot anyone in eight episodes. Like, but we have what we have, so we need to work with it. Uh, first library I, star I faced was gRPC Kotlin. Because of this uh, name, I thought it's official. It's something from JetBrains, but unfortunately it's not. Uh, so what I saw? I saw this, that's the version is 0.0.2. For me, it, it was a little bit upset because if I ca come to my manager and say that I want to use this library in production, I think that he won't be very happy. And one more thing, he had this uh, message, just warning that it's only prototype, not tested in production, just don't use me. So this message is. And uh, mm, I, I thought a lot about it, but I tried this library. And now, uh, actually, this guy, the author of this library, did a uh, cool thing. He did a lot of uh, cool stuff. And my application that I hope is working in production, and you are playing with it probably, uh, is uh, totally built on top of this uh, library. And now the version is 0.1.0. Uh, it had the long uh, way, it's like a year, uh, to from 0.0.2 to 1 to 0.1.0. Um, I hope one day it will be released and you can use it in production. But actually it works. You can find some bugs, you can uh, contribute to it and make it better. Another library I already showed you is Crota Plus. A uh, few months ago it looked this way. So it was 0 0.1.3. It was really hard to use, not much documentation, and uh, I was a little bit afraid of it, of this library, but I also tried it, and it uh, was cool for me. And now it has a logo. It's very important. And uh, the version is 0 0.3.0, and I hope it would be in production, uh, like released 1.0, 
soon. And uh, this library is really cool because you have a lot of things to update, a lot of things to manipulate with. You can uh, uh, do a lot of uh, stuff with your PC. You can even write your own generators here. So uh, if you are interested in your PC and Kotlin, you probably should look into this library. And other useful links. First of all, is uh, repositories from Salesforce called GRPC Java Contrib and Reactive GRPC, uh, which are really useful for you if you want to understand uh, how GRPC works, how we can um, like benefit from react reactivity, from coroutines, and how it could be implemented at Kotlin. So, uh, and uh, in GRPC Java Contrib, you can also contribute if you have some ideas how to make uh, Java with GRPC working uh, better. Uh, another library is for more for protobuf. It's uh, for converting protobuf and multi-platform Kotlin in order to use protobuf for different platforms. And the last link is actually my code. Uh, you can also contribute to it, work with it, play with it, and do whatever you want. And I hope one day we'll have a sta stable Kotlin support because all libraries that I showed you are not released, so like 1.0. So it's still not fin finalized and we could not be stable, but I hope someday it will be. And time to summarize. Uh, some takeaways I want you to take from my presentation. First of all, it doesn't matter if you use Kotlin, Java, or Go, or any other languages, but if you want to have effective communication, you probably can use your PC and you can look into it. Uh, Another that gRPC plus Kotlin can be used today. If you are bound into gRPC Java, you can use it with gRPC Java. If you are not, you can try some uh, exotic libraries. And gRPC plus Kotlin make things easier. So as I showed you, uh, the code that we need to write with Java is ugly, but uh, if we are going with uh, Kotlin libraries, and they hope they will be better and better soon, they make things easier. Um, of course, we are waiting for stable versions and cool features because all these libraries are still developing and you can contribute there and you can um, like, ex explain your ideas, what you want from them. And of course, feel free to contribute because uh, open source works from lives from contributions. Uh, it's not only the author of the library, but the community that uh, helps us. Because uh, this, um, the more people contribute, the better the software is. So contribute to open source and you'll have plus one into your karma. And let's define the star master. Okay. So, DDG, I don't know who are you, but if you're here, you can, after, the, after my talk, you can go to me and uh, take price whatever you want from my table, except my laptop but my mobile phone. <laughs> so, maybe some applauses for this guy or girl, because he did, <laughs> he just missed my beautiful talk while playing this game. <laughs> and it's time to say thank you. Uh, there are some people who under my, um, beneath my back and who helped me to do this presentation. First of all, it's Roy Tsang. He's a friend of mine. He's a cool guy who did a lot of talks about GRPC and he uh, like inspired me a lot. Uh, these two guys are authors of these open source, open source libraries like GRPC, Kotlin, and Crota Plus. They did really cool job and I hope with your contributions, with your help, they'll do it better and better. So they're really making life easier and making life better for us. And uh, uh, these guys, these my friends, one from Google, another from uh, other company from Ukraine, and they helped me and reviewed my slides, not to make them as ugly as it were before. I hope you liked it. And of course, this guy, do you know him? Louder, you can say it louder. Yeah, it's the father of Star Wars, George Lucas. And uh, he really inspired me a lot because I'm a cool, very big fan of Star Wars. And time to say thank you to you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for not sleeping too loudly. <laughs> and I hope you liked it. And 
Time for questions. Do we have time? Yeah, we have five minutes. So, how do we handle errors? And when using REST adding fields is not a breaking change. The same with gRPC. Uh, okay, about handling errors uh, in gRPC. Um, what uh, should we do? First of all, in gRPC, uh, errors are handled uh, with status codes. Uh, and uh, if you have some exceptions, uh, your status codes is an, as unknown. And if you want to do some um, your business logic, of course you need to do, you need to write interceptors. On my another talk, I showed how to write interceptors, how to handle it, all this stuff. And uh, um, actually, I, I am not sure, but uh, I think there are not very really crucial changes if we are using with, uh, it with futures and channels. Uh, so you're just writing interceptors, and in these interceptors you can uh, like, uh, take this status code and uh, do whatever you want with it. And another question was when using REST adding field is not a breaking change, is it the same with gRPC? Uh, no, it's not the problem. Actually, it's not more about gRPC, it's about protobuf. And as I already told you, um, protobuf uh, has optional fields. All fields are optional and you can easily deprecate them and easily add new. You just in Wix, we also implemented some tags in protofile and uh, some custom tags. And uh, with this, we also do some additional logic on top of protobuf. So, I think that's the answer th to this question. So I think I have some last slide. Oh no. Oh no, it's the last one. So thank you for being here.